Good day, world. This is Buck Denver, and I've got news for you. Old Testament review. We're not done. But before we jump in, it's time to answer our big question. Big questions with Buck Denver. Uh, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Ahem. <clears throat> Today's big question, who picked the books to be in the Bible? Who picked the books to be in the Bible? Uh, thank... never mind. Sunday school lady, what do we know? Oh, that's a great question, Buck. First, we need to learn a new word, and the word is... Canon! I've got a cannon and I like to shoot It's really big and black, but I think it's kinda cute It makes a big noise in the middle of the night And it's really very handy in a pirate fight <laughs> Hello, my cannon! I've got a cannon and um, I... Um, no, Captain Pete. You mean cannon with two ends in the middle. We're talking about cannon with one end in the middle. Oh, I've got a cannon with just one end. I still like to shoot it, but never at a friend. It uses lots of powder and... No, wait, Captain Pete. That's still a cannon with two ends. The word cannon comes from a Greek word that means rule or standard. The Old Testament canon is the official list of books that were accepted as God's inspired word. Same with the New Testament canon. If a book was up to the standard, it was accepted into the canon and ended up in the Bible we've got today. Now, the Old Testament canon was put together by Jewish leaders before the birth of Jesus. The stories of Israel passed down from the time of Moses and the king Kings and prophets were written down and collected, and then, starting about 500 years before Jesus, organized into books. Jewish teachers, called rabbis, took God's word very seriously and carefully discussed which books were inspired by God and which books were just interesting books of Jewish history. We believe the final list of inspired books was set by about 140 BC, and those are the books we have in our Bibles today. Now, of course, the New Testament canon, or list of inspired books, wasn't determined by Jewish rabbis, but rather by the leaders of the early Christian church. But of course, now we're talking about church history, and no one knows more about church history than a pirate. What? Oh, that's me. Oh, wait a minute. Let me change sets. <laughs> The story of the great I am, it shouldn't be such a mystery. From Jesus Christ to Billy Graham, a pirate's pretty church history. <laughs> I'm Captain Pete, and this is a pirate's guide to church history. You know about Jesus way back in the beginning, and you know about Billy Graham here in modern times, but what happened in the middle? Right? In the middle, in the middle. Me and my pirate parrot, Reginald. That's me, that's me. Yeah, I know. We're here to tell you stories from the middle. So here we go! <coughs> 367 AD was a special year. What's so special about it? Did they invent zippers? No, that was much later. Let's start a little earlier. Jesus died and rose again around 30 AD. By 95 AD, just 65 years later, all the writings of the New Testament had been completed and were being passed from church to church as Christianity spread. How? By parrot? No, mostly people walking from town to town. But new writings kept popping up, and some of them were a little wacky. What do you mean? Well, they didn't agree with the old writings. Sometimes people wrote something and said it was from a famous apostle like John or Paul when it really wasn't. What? They lied? Yeah, it was getting very confusing. So the leaders of the church decided they needed an official list or a canon of the New Testament, just like the Jewish canon of the Old Testament. So they came up with a test. A test? I hate tests. They give me headaches. Yeah, well, this one was important. 
First, they asked if the writing had come from an apostle, someone who knew Jesus, or from a close friend of an apostle. Second, did the writing agree with what the apostles and the early church leaders taught about Jesus? That makes sense. Yeah. Remember, there were still people alive who had known Jesus when these books were written. So if a new writing said crazy stuff about Jesus, there were people alive who knew it was wrong. And third, was the writing already accepted and used by the whole church? If a writing passed all three tests, it was in the cannon. Right? I dropped a bag of cookies in a cannon once. I'll drop you in a cannon. By 200 AD, everyone agreed on 21 of the 27 books. By 240, they agreed on all but four. By 300, only Hebrews and Revelation were still being discussed. They talked about this for 100 years? They must have been tired. It was different people talking at different times. And finally, that brings us to 367 AD. When they invented the zipper. No, this has nothing to do with zippers. In 367 AD, a church leader named Athanasius sent out the annual Easter letter that set the date for Easter that year. It changed every year. It's a very confusing holiday. And in his letter, he named all 27 books of the New Testament, and there was no disagreement. For the first time, all the church leaders agreed. God had helped them choose the books that carried his inspiration, and the canon of the New Testament was officially set. Brad, is that the cannon with my cookies? No, it's not, you crazy bird. And that's how the books of the New Testament were selected. See you next time. Bring me a cookie. Bring me a cookie.